He's a newsman. Uh, that's what he is. He's an individual that gets the facts right. He's the individual that brings the news to you. Lord knows we need more of those. Bill Werner with the Minnesota News Network, uh, who we love having coming down the road with us, joins us now. Bill, good to have you in the rig. It's good to ha- it's good to have you with you. It's been it's been a heck of a weekend, <laughs> and it's starting out as a, as a heck heck of a week. I was just saying, you know, the uh, after uh, being down at the Republican convention all weekend, and that was a, a real a, a real ride, needless to say. <laughs> And then at uh, a little bit after seven this morning, I thought I'd get a little bit of a breather this morning. And I checked my email and <laughs> uh, an email from the governor's office saying he and legislative leaders are going to announce a tentative budget agreement. So here we are at the Capitol. <laughs> We're ready, ready to roll. Whatever you're getting paid, Bill, it isn't enough. Uh, that weekend in Rochester alone should have taken care of a lot of what yeah, we're that talking was, about. That was a wild weekend. Oh. I mean, I mean, for Republicans. I mean, you know, they all conventions can go get short on decorum sometimes. I mean, yeah. obviously, political conventions because a lot of people, you know, and and it's a party and get down and let's let's rough and ready atmosphere, right? In the conventions, this Republican convention, this was pretty wild as far as things go on and Republican conventions that I've covered with all the things that was going on there. You know, between the the shots between Kendall Qualls and Mike Murphy pretty nasty stuff and ultimately they got a uh, a del- they got a, a a nominee out of it an endorsement uh, um, uh for Matt Jensen but boy they wrangled with nine ballots to to get there and and just made it that that final ninth ballot was eight minutes before their six o'clock drop dead deadline you know when they had to start clearing the venue out for the next people in so they says oh we're going to have extend the convention another hour to take care of platform and other miscellaneous stuff and meanwhile the guys with the electric forklifts are starting to come in and (laughs) <laughs> that was wild. I got I got out of there as fast as I could before I got run over. You know, when the business at hand was done, I'm not going to get run over by an electric forklift. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lexington Mayor Mike Murphy in the end yeah. is the one that, that did this, right? I mean, he, oh, he's right. the one who yeah. said, all right, I'm pulling the pin. I'm supporting Dr. Scott Jensen. Uh, who, yeah, and, then he, and, and, then he, and then he says, Qualls is a sellout. And Qualls gets back up and says, well, I, 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 never, I never gave him any sort of agreement or, or offered him the lieutenant governor spot. And then Murphy gets up before the next ballot and says, well, I have it right here on my on my uh, smartphone, (laughs) you know, and he just went on and on and on. And then the thing that was which really dropped Jaws is uh, um, when Murphy's running mate, Lacey Johnson, the lieutenant governor running mate uh, on ballot, I know when they were starting to lose momentum. Okay, yeah. Murphy grabbed a uh, just a razor thin margin lead after the I'm looking at my at my sheet here after the third ballot. OK, but then it started eroding away. So they're starting to get on kind of desperation, defense move, move and move. And then uh, in, in that mode. And so uh, Murphy's um, uh, lieutenant governor running mate, Lacey Johnson, gets up and says, I want you to look at all you guys in your convention. You're all white and you're all old. And you're going, <laughs> there's, a, there's a black man saying this now. OK, yeah. and. Okay, and that might or might not be true. Okay, you look around. I mean, there's a lot of younger delegates, and there's a lot of delegates of color. I mean, you know, it's not a question. Okay, um, they're they're on the convention floor. There were some old white guys, myself included. <laughs> I'm not a delegate. <laughs> you know, okay, but that kind of language goes. You think to yourself, what are they trying to do here? They're certainly not trying to build bridges by doing that, even if they're telling the truth or if there's maybe saying the perception, the public's perception of Republicans. Okay, whether correct or incorrect, the the message that Mr. Johnson was trying to give the convention is, look, if you need to change this message, you know, you need to realize this. But then, at that particular point, things kind of went off the you know off the ramp and, <laughs> at the convention it is just you know and and off we went to the races after that one bill i want to talk a little bit about because it's nine ballots because it was that contentious <laughs> yeah. you know right. how do you bring that party back together now granted it's it's the electorate it, itself that is going to decide whether they want governor walls to be governor still of north of minnesota i'm sorry but how do you bring a party structure to the point where they're holding local fundraisers to where they're saying come stand on this end gate i mean there's a lot of hate that comes out of nine ballots 
There is. And I think, but also I think we have to remember that you get away from the heat of the battle, you get away from the convention center in Rochester, you get back out. I kind of think, and I don't want to presume for thousands of delegates and so on, but I kind of think that, that a good number of them will say, though the ones that aren't dissatisfied will say, we need to elect a Republican, therefore, and, and we need to, to, to get together on this. Now, there's going to be some some Murphyites uh, and, and maybe some Qualls people, but probably some Murphy's people just because of the demeanor, you know, of that particular campaign, who are going to be a little bit uh, more bruised as a result of this. Yeah, okay. there, uh, there's, right. there's no question about that, Bill. But, you know, how big I, I'm curious about this. Now, this is a whole aside. I get that. But, you know, I'm, I'm an old Minnesota Vikings season ticket holder. What, what type w- with Dr. Scott Jensen, how big of a help was and, it to and have Matt, Matt Burke, Burke? As long as you're talking of the, about the right. Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> how big of a help was it to have Matt Burke? That was my question. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. You anticipate my next question. Yeah. That's an interesting question. Um, and I... It's, we're going to we're going to have to just see it clearly, I think, in Jensen's campaign to to for the nomination right in these early stages of the cam- uh, of the campaign. Um, I, I think it probably factored in just in the sense that you after after he gets the endorsement and we're out there in the hallway back behind the convention and we're crowding, crowding, crowding around for the scrum, you know, and, and Jensen is up there and, and Burke is. Is towering over him, you know, over the biceps and the whole thing. And, so, and Jensen is joking about it and, and all this kind of thing. And it kind of, you know, the question would be, does Matt Burke have the policy experience to be lieutenant governor if, if Jensen can't be, it can't be governor? Or does Burke have, have the policy experience to be governor if Jensen can't be governor? Okay. How much is that going to come into play? Um, you know, they're both... Uh, Jensen is relatively young. He's, in, I think, in good health. So it's more of a PR thing as opposed to, gee, you know, what if the governor candidate dies? Can the lieutenant governor take over? You know, so. but, but, you know, I would add this. Minnesota, you know, is not afraid to elect a celebrity or at least look at it at a <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jesse Ventura. They prove that, right? Well, I, I think with Mike Murphy at the convention, I, I, I saw – a little bit of Jesse Ventura when Mike Murphy's going, I'm a, right? You know what I mean? Right. Uh, and so, and so would Burke is a different kind of a guy, but he, he has at least certainly that um, uh, presence about him, shall we say, uh, right? In the same category as, as, as a Ventura in that regard. So, yeah. how do you think it plays out that Dr. Jensen, and he uses uh, Dr. Uh, Jensen a lot? Right. How do you think it plays out that he's an anti-vaxxer? You know, my sense is, um, and I got to be careful not to cross the line into into opinion here. Okay, I want to. My my analysis of it is that that Scott Jensen um, is a, is politically very adept. Okay. And so he's able to sense the wind real well and make adjustments. Now, I'm not suggesting that he's going to abandon a particular principle or, or point of view, okay? Um, but it's a matter of do you emphasize that? Do you downplay it? Do you stress a little bit something else? I think Scott Jensen's very adept at that. And therefore, the vax is- issue, you know, he, he. I think that he's going to know how to adjust that to make it um, perhaps less prominent in the, from in those uh, in the minds of those who uh, really object to his position on it strongly. Am I evading the question enough? Uh, yeah. Like, no. In, and in fairness, I just put a journalist uh, in the way of opinion, so I'm not sure it was a fair no. question of you. But no, it's a fair, absolutely fair question. I, I, and, and I and I think that this is my take of the kind of person that Scott Jensen is, okay? Yep. And that, uh, and I think, I think as such, I don't see it as a tremendous liability to him politically long-term. Interesting. Uh, you know, I've, I've had a chance to, to visit with uh, Dr. Jensen, and uh, he does handle it very well. Uh, I yes, think you're right on that, and he's going to. The big question is never, not going to be whether they want Scott Jensen to be their governor. It's going to be whether or not they want Tim Walz to not be their governor. And, and a lot yeah. of this is going to be personalities too, you know, in that Tim Walls, he's established the, the uh, image of I'm the coach, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, he did that during COVID, whether you liked it or not, you know, he came across as that. 
Dr. Scott Jensen, the family doctor, right? right? Sit down. Okay, let's talk. I want to have a conversation with you. Let's use common sense. Totally different kinds of personalities, both very good communicators. No question about that. Bill, always always good to visit with you. And let's talk about the budget deal with the governor another time, okay? That's good. There's going to be plenty to talk about. They might not get there. We'll see. It's not a done deal. That's all I want to see. Not a done deal.